Tonight, Fitbit wristbands are recalled after rashes. Now you can block people on LinkedIn. Amazon adds love film to Prime and Facebook sees dead people. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 29 for February 21st, Friday, 2014. This is episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. Now, first up, Fitbit is issuing a voluntary recall of its Force product after some users experienced skin irritation. The $129 Fitbit Force is an activity tracking wristband. CEO and co-founder James Park posted a letter on the Fitbit website saying that the company will stop selling the Force and will issue full refunds for people who have already bought it. He said only 1.7% of Force users have reported skin irritation, which may be caused by either nickel components or from the glue used in manufacturing. The company plans to launch a new and presumably less irritating replacement band in the near future. We should hope so. Finally, you can block other members on LinkedIn. After numerous complaints and feedback from users, LinkedIn's Paul Rockwell, head of trust and safety, admitted, quote, it was the right thing to do. The blocking extends to accounts and activity from any other logged in member. Other new features were added, included disconnecting from other members, customizing how search engines see your profile, changing your profile visibility settings, and who can see your photo. LinkedIn has not fixed their People You Know section, which lists contacts who are not even a part of LinkedIn. And if you try to add them, LinkedIn sends an email asking the contact to open an account. Very annoying. The Verge reports that LinkedIn user Robin Fisher and others are frustrated, stating the company, quote, misleads its users into thinking they're connecting with people who are already using the service. Amazon announced that it will raise the price of its popular Prime service in the UK and Germany by around 64%, bringing prices of the service up to £79 and €49, Euros respectively. Amazon's Love Film Instant Video service will be folded into the Prime Video offering as well, finally bringing Amazon Instant Video to Prime subscribers in those areas. Anyone who had previously subscribed to both Prime and Love Film separately will see around a 35% savings with the new Prime pricing arrangement. It's pretty nice. You may remember that Amazon CFO Tom Skutak hinted at a price hike during the company's last earnings call, suggesting a hike of up to $40 in the U.S. In that case, however, he cited fuel and shipping costs as the cause for the potential increase. Now, coming up, one of the world's fastest supercomputers is hijacked to make Dogecoin. What else? Uh, but And also next, we are joined by Levi Sumagaisai from Silicon Beat to talk about death and what Facebook and other social media services will do with your profiles after you're gone. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. With lynda.com's uh, easy to follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, from industry experts. With a lynda.com subscription, members get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering a wide range of technical skills, creative techniques, and business strategies. Want to improve your photography, master new software, boost your web design skills, or learn programming? At lynda.com, you'll find top quality videos on hundreds of different subjects. You can watch from your computer, your tablet, or mobile device. The instructors are accomplished professionals. They're experts in their field who are passionate about teaching. And each course is structured so you can learn from start to finish or just jump on to find a quick answer. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 to access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses for free for seven days. That's lynda.com slash TN2. All right, so joining us is Levi Sumagaisai, who's the editor and blogger at Silicon Beat and Good Morning Silicon Valley. Levi, thank you for joining us today. Hi, thanks, Jason. Absolutely. So let's talk about death. Uh, we're all going to face it at some point, but social media is still working hard to kind of figure out how it should deal 
with death when it happens. Um, Facebook, they basically just changed how they'll handle the settings on your page after you die. How are people going to live on through Facebook with these changes? Right. Well, today, um, Facebook blogged that they're going to keep the profile of someone who has died uh, the way that they wanted it to appear to people based on their privacy settings. Uh, so, for example, I do this all the time. Um, I have public posts on Facebook, mm -hmm. and then I also have different settings where um, only some of my friends can see them, only some of my coworkers can see them, etc. So uh, what Facebook is going to do is it's going to keep the settings exactly, you know, how, how the deceased person meant it to be. So that friends and people that are connected with the page can still go and interact. Some people feel... Uh, connected to the page, even you know, long, long past uh, that person being alive, it's a way for them to continue to be connected to them. Um, That's right. Yeah, good move. Then now they've also made some other changes as well, right? They've created a look back video for the deceased. When Facebook started, uh, when they rolled out the look back videos, I remember hearing about um, a dad in, I believe it was, I believe it was Missouri. Um, who wanted to have access to his dead son's look back video. And um, I think that that's what prompted this change. Um, Facebook is now going to give them access to their look back videos. And the other thing that they're going to do is they're going to create look back videos for the families um, of those who, uh, who request it. Yeah, it's fascinating. Those look back videos are actually very, very interesting. So I think that sounds like a great movie. It's very interesting to see how these social networks are kind of tackling this complex issue. How are other social media networks uh, doing that? Twitter, Google, Gmail, I mean, pretty much any other service. What are they doing to kind of, uh, kind of meet Facebook on this level? Google um, actually has uh, something called an inactive account manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can uh, go to your Google settings and set up how you want Google to handle your Gmail, your YouTube, your Picasa, all, you know, all the various services they offer. You can choose to have um, your details emailed to someone that you designate, you know, when you die. Um, so there's all kinds of settings um, that they provide there. Um, Twitter, if they're provided with a death certificate, um, they will deactivate the person's account. Very interesting. It seems kind of yeah. divided between, you know, on one hand, sharing that data with uh, the people that you select, the people that you love, and or otherwise pretending like you never existed in the first place. I'm not sure right. which one's the better way to go. Well, thank you yeah. so much for joining us, Levy. It was a pleasure having you on. Where can people find your work? Uh, well, siliconbeat.com. Uh, I blog there along with... Um, our reporters uh, from the Mercury News, and um, and I'm also on Twitter. It shows right there. And that's Levy Sue S U. Awesome. Yes. Thank you again, Levy. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. <gasps> All right, and finally, the Harvard Crimson Student newspaper reported yesterday that Harvard's Odyssey supercomputing cluster was hijacked recently for the purpose of mining Dogecoins. The perp was either faculty or staff and had permission to use the system, but did not have permission to mine cryptocurrency. Uh, they were caught but not publicly named, and their permission to use Harvard computers has now been revoked, according to the school officials. The Odyssey is a 4,096-core supercomputing cluster capable of 32.4 trillion floating point operations per second, so they probably mined a lot of cryptocurrency. The fate of those Doge coins remains unknown. Very currency, many coin. Wow. A quick heads up that next week, Twit will host a ton of live coverage from Mobile World Congress. At 11.30 p.m., that's p.m. in the evening, Pacific, Sunday, we'll have Nokia's press conference live. Monday morning, following Tech News Today at 11 a.m. Pacific, you can watch uh, myself and Mike and a few other folks covering Samsung Unpacked 5. We'll also have announcements of others, so be sure to watch our continuing coverage throughout the day on our live stream at live.twit.tv. That is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash tn2 and write us at tn2 at twit.tv. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.